Hey, it's time for Tech Talk. Here on VoiceOver Body Shop, we got a bunch of cool stuff to show people tonight. Some stuff on Twisted Wave. Yep, we talk all about the new features such as punch and recording. All right, and some nostalgic stuff about... The humble beginnings of eWabs uh, yes, before VOBS began. Long before. A little bit on how to take care of your microphone and some great questions from our audience. So stay tuned. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. there i'm dan leonard and i'm george whittam and this is voiceover body shop or vo bs yes. tech talk 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 talk, 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 talk. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of cool stuff to talk about tonight uh you, you're going to talk a little bit about twisted wave yeah. uh if you've got a question for us right now throw it in the chat room if it has That's to do chance. with uh with the home voiceover studio technology because that's what we do. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. We also have a little bit of memorabilia tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, that for those of you that... From history. Yeah, because George and I have been doing this show for a while, and it's fun to see what happens over time. It was officially eight years on March 22nd that Dan and I started doing our show together. So we'll have a little trip down memory lane. It, it's, it's more like a nightmare down the memory lane, but it was an interesting our couple humble of weeks. beginnings. Yeah, very, very humble. Uh, and, uh, you know, and maybe I, I may have a little bit on how to take care of your mic. Good. So let's get going because you've got some stuff on Twisted Wave. Let's talk. Yeah. So, uh, if you're a Twisted Wave user or if you've considered using Twisted Wave, but you're on the fence about using Twisted Wave because it's missing maybe one or two features that you really need, namely punch in or punch and roll recording. Well, it finally has it. We mentioned, uh, we mentioned it two weeks ago. At that time, it was still in, in beta development. Not anymore. Now it's been, <laughs> it's been released. It's gone through its growing pains, um, and it's it's pretty much locked in now. So, so the way Thomas, the developer, and we, if you go on on YouTube, type in Ewabs and Twisted Wave, you will find an interview that we did with Thomas, the developer, like six something years, yeah, a long time ago. Um, that's how long we've been using the software. This software, I think, has been around as long as we have on this show. It's really been amazing. Uh, but he's very slow to roll out new features. Like, he's really cautious. He's very much into it, being stable, pretty much looking the same from version to version, which I think he gets it. Like, software that's for professionals needs to be consistent. This is why Pro Tools, while it had some, you know, uh, cosmetic uh, changes, and then it's also had under the hood changes. You can sit down at Pro Tools from seven years ago or twelve years ago, and now and it looks 
pretty much the same. The cut, everything works the same. Twisted Wave, same kind of idea. It, it's consistent. Um, but he finally released this punch and roll feature, something that a lot of people, especially doing long form uh, audiobook narration, have been looking for. So if you go onto your Twisted Wave app and you want to try something new, run the update. And uh, as of today, I think the current version is 1.21.6. There was another new update just released. Um, so he, basically what happens is he puts out a version of the software, but he tries to release a version that runs on as many versions of Mac OS as possible. Right. And in doing so, he'll find out like, oh, this feature doesn't work on 10 point, oh, uh, like 10.10.5. Or something like that. And the only way he's going to find that out is by putting it out there. Right. So last week, there was 1.21, then 1.21.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.5. He's been answering a lot of emails. In other he words. has been a very, very <laughs> busy guy. But I'll tell you, man, you can't think of a more uh, on the on the spot, um, responsive software developer. Yeah. I, I, I love Twisted Wave. Yeah. You know, for especially for long format narration, and I uh, e-learning. E oh, for e-learning, e it's e -learning. Ma magnificent for e-learning because you can divvy up files like that. It's cut your production time tremendously. Uh, and I, you know, I tried the the new version and tried the punch and roll. Not that I ever use it for anything just, because I just yeah. I record everything yeah. and then go back and edit it. Mm -hmm. But for for auto for, for audiobook narrators, it's it you know, it's like it's like three seconds. But, Oh, look at that. Say your pre-roll and off. And, and it works great. And that's, yeah. you know, it, it might take a lot of people away from Pro Tools, which would be good because Pro Tools is, you really have to know what you're talking about and what you're doing if you use Pro Tools. And the expense, it's becoming quite and an expensive you, And updating and all the things. Of it. Yeah. Twisted Wave is just super simple. For voice and actors. It doesn't overwhelm track. your computer, you yeah. know, your Mac mostly. Uh, but you what can, a, <laughs> I can You can pull out a, a Mac from a version with 10.4. Tiger, I think it is. Yeah. And if you email, uh, you know, email um, Thomas, he will send you a download for the version of Twisted Wave that runs on Tiger, which is what 10, 11 years old now, something like that. But he's got it. You yeah. can download, and it runs. It works. Yeah. yeah. I think for voiceover, for the type of work we do, it has everything you could possibly need to do your voice tracks. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, if, unless you're producing stuff, but if you're just Sending out vo dry voice tracks doesn't be. This is a tool for certain well, jobs. What were some of the updates that he put in there? Aside well, we from talk the... about punch and roll. Yeah. Um, now something that came and then disappeared again was dark mode. If you're on Mojave and you're all about the dark mode, um, he tried desperately to support dark mode and Twisted Wave. But what he was finding out was that some of the audio units plugins, which aren't Twisted Wave plugins, they're Mac plugins, aren't dark mode compatible. Explain so, what you mean by dark mode. So if you're on Mojave, you can now change the overall color theme of your desktop, the menu bar, everything, so it's all dark tint, ah. like shades of gray, you know, from black to gray. So, like, instead of everything having a bright look, it has a dark look. And if right. it's studio people love it because now you can have sort of a darker look to your screen, and if you work in low lighting, it's easier on well, the eyes. I've, I've noticed that at night the sand dune turns into night. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's a different oh, variation on I dark <laughs> dark dark mode. But so anyway, so he he released an update that worked with dark mode. So Twisted Wave also had the dark theme, but some of the plugins, which you know were developed by either else, Apple yeah. or yeah. Apple's partners, don't support dark mode. So you'd load a certain plugin and it would just crash. Yeah. So he actually had to then roll out another version that disabled the dark mode thing again. This is just one of those things you deal with, and, and he's, he's dealing with it. So it also, it's got um, the ability to reapply the last effect. So if there's an effect you do a lot, you just hit Command F, and it just keeps reapplying that effect over and over. Oh. So if you do a certain effect for a mouth noise, right. like a plosive, you can just say, do it again, do it again, do it again. Um, and of course, every time I mention a shortcut, these are customizable. It's Twisted Wave. You can, like an audition, you can customize all of these settings. Um, it also has the ability to paste multiple times, which for some reason you didn't have that in there before, but now if you keep hitting command V, it will keep pasting an additional copy sequentially. It didn't do that before. Um, you can delete a marker with a backspace stroke. Yeah. You used and, to have to like drag the marker until it disappeared. Yeah. That was yeah you can just, now you can just click backspace or delete. Right. And, um, and then also Twisted Wave can optionally ask for a name when a new marker is added. So that, that means is 
Every time you make a new marker, it says, what do you want to call it? Instead of clicking on the little red Instead triangle. Of clicking and, on the triangle and typing. It's, yeah. You know, these are little features. That, that's a, actually a very nice improvement. But they the type can of work save I you do. some time. Yeah. yeah. So that's the kind of thing. So, and again, you should make sure if you want to have all, this, all these features, make sure you do have the absolute most up-to-date version, which I think is 121.6 as of Monday, April 15th. Tax day. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just sent a lot of money to the IRS this morning, and I'm still bleeding. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, make sure you have the most up-to-date version. Excellent. I just downloaded on my new Mac uh, my new Mac Mini and tried it out. I'm like, hey, you don't notice a difference, but you do see the new features. Yeah, the features are really cool. tucked into the menus. Yeah. Another thing is, if, um, if you want to see a tour of those, I did a little tutorial video on George the Tech uh, on YouTube and Facebook. I shared it on the Facebook group for Twisted Wave as well. You can see everything I just described, described on screen. Cool. Um, and what was I going to say? There was one more thing related to that. I don't know if I think of it, I'll mention it. Uh, some, um, some stuff about plugins. Moving on. Oh, well, oh yes. Yeah. Some audio unit plugins would crash Twisted Wave on the older versions as well, like right. Sonics, uh, Sonics plugins. So make sure, again, be up, be up to date. Oh, this is what I was going to say. Ah. If you want to run the new versions and not... If you don't want to fully commit, like if you go to Twisted Wave Update, it's going to now overwrite the other version. If you're concerned about that, you can go to TwistedWave.com, click on the Mac version, and download the new version, and then keep the old version. So you can actually have both old and new running on your Mac. Just give them different names, and then you're not committed. So you're not too worried about a new bug coming in and biting you in the butt. The old version is still there. It still works. So good. the little hidden thing that most people don't think of. Yeah, it does. Good to know. Now. You're somebody who, you know, you, you keep a database of your clients and all sorts of files and stuff. Now, you, you've you got a thing from Dropbox called O-Drive. What's that all about? Actually, it's an, an, an another company that came along to solve a problem. So if you use Dropbox and OneDrive, which is Microsoft's thing, and Box.com, or is it .net, and a slew of one. If you go to if you go to O-Drive's website, odrive.com, you'll see the huge list of systems that they support. Um, this unifies all of that. So everything is unified under one place. It makes it much easier to manage all of these things. But for me, what's most important, because really now I've consolidated my life down to Dropbox. I used to use like four different ones. Now I'm just on Dropbox. The, really me, the killer app for me is that you can very easily manage your, your hard drive space. If you're like me, most of us are on Dropbox and we have a terabyte size Dropbox because we use it every day. We pay $10 a month. How many of you have a terabyte SSD drive in your MacBook Air? Probably very, very few of you. Super expensive. I only have a 256 gig drive. So you're constantly full. My Dropbox has got 900 gigs of stuff in it right now. So with O Drive, you just simply unsync all the stuff you don't oh, need anymore. Oh, that's helpful, yes. With, with Dropbox, yeah. yes, you can go in and selectively sync folders, but you have to remember to go in there. It's not as granular. Granular With this, you can literally unsync an individual file. Let's say you just generated a video and it's 17 gigabytes. I don't know. You can now just, once it's been posted or once you've backed it up, unsync. It's still up in Dropbox, but it's not on your uh, hard drive taking up space anymore. This has been really useful for me because I, on my desktop at home, I have a plenty of space. My entire Dropbox lives there, you know, all one terabyte of stuff. But on my laptop, I have a selective amount of stuff. And it has been hugely helpful. There is a bit of a migration process to get your stuff into the O Drive system. Um, but once it's set up, it's, it's been hugely helpful for me. So if that's your situation, give O Drive a try. Check it out. Excellent. All right. Well, one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, is a lot of people wonder about how to take care of their microphones. You know, now step one, step one is don't drop it. Don't don't drop it. You know, occasionally you'll find a microphone like you know our friends here. Drop this down a little bit lower. This one, a little dense in the screen and stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, but you know this guy here. You know, it's it's important. One, you got to mount it right. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still finding a lot of people still mounting it upright mm -hmm. and creating lots of plosives. And then, of course, using a pop screen and stuff. Now, a pop screen's great if you really work a mic close mm -hmm. and, you know, you spit a lot. 
which is really what those things are for. I mean, I spit guard. Yeah, it's it you know yeah. it 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 prevents you know someone like Celine Dion spitting on a ten thousand dollar microphone and you know making that kind of rusty. Right. Uh, but yeah, you have to back off my levels just a little bit while I'm a little closer to this mic. But it's important to one make sure you mount it right. Uh, most of these are all solid state things. I mean, occasionally people like to have a tube mic and they'll have a tube in it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, but you know, and, and then there was this theory that, well, you hang it upside down because the heat from the tube will dissipate upwards and Away not disturb, the capsule, not right. disturb the capsule. Right. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but they're all solid state. So, I mean, you could have it sideways. You can have it any particular really way. Can, yeah. It, it really isn't going to matter because the, the diaphragms and these are so tight. They're not, they're not going to stretch out or anything. Ribbon like mics that. were one of those things too. Yes. You wouldn't hang a ribbon mic sideways because the ribbon would sag or something right. like that. Right. Exactly. Nor put 48 phantom power through it. You yeah. Know, don't do that. That would be bad. Unless it's an active ribbon mic. Right. Yeah. Now, there are some people who are real obsessive and they have their felt bags and they put them on their microphones Good and for stuff. You. you know, out here in California, it's dusty. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, look, you know, look at my desk sometime. You get a, yeah, gets I mean, a little if bit dusty. Your dust house on. doesn't have like a, f a whole house HVAC. You know, a forced air system with air filtration, you're going to have a lot of particulates and dust. Absolutely. Like, that can affect a mic over time. But, you know, with the way they've built them now, with the, the screens and the mesh on them, it's not a lot of dust getting in there. Now, if you're a chain smoker, yeah. not only do you have a nice deep voice, but you're also not going to live as long. Also, your mic won't live as long. So you don't want people smoking around your microphones. And uh, I don't think that's as much of a problem as it used to be. Not you know, much, but... these old ribbon mics. I've got one vape? over. Is vape a problem with microphones? Uh, anybody? Know? Anybody? <laughs> anybody? <sighs> I don't know. I, yeah. you know. I would think vape would be bad because it's yeah. it's a, it's a mist, but it has a a, a um a, sort of a, what do you, what is the stuff in a vape? It's a uh, it's don't a, ask me. I... Well, it's it's <laughs> it's an oil, I guess. Yes, yes. And so yes, that vape yeah. is gonna that that smoke is gonna have an it's oil going to accumulate. It's gonna accumulate. Yeah. You may not notice that somebody's smoking, don't but vape it'll... on your mic. Yeah, do not vape on your mic. So you don't really have to worry too much about it. Now, what about phantom power running through it all the time? Is that a problem? Not really. I mean, uh, there used to be an issue where patching a mic cable into a cable with phantom power on could possibly damage the microphone. I think that issue is pretty well straightened out. I mean, sometimes headphones, the one thing you don't want to do is have your headphones on while listening to a mic and patch the cable with <coughs> phantom power. You hear a huge spike in your headphones. It hurts. It can even blow out your speakers. Yeah. You don't want to do yeah. that. Or your ears. Yeah. yeah. You can get your mic cleaned. Uh, if you've been using your mic for more than five or six years, the tonality of the mic can slightly change. Like it is like whether you like it or not, getting a little bit of dust or grime on the right. capsule. And with capsules designed, they're all designed differently, but the, the basket or the head basket around the mic is what's really the most different from mic to mic. So if you can look in and see the capsule really clearly, like very clearly, that means it does. It's not well protected. You know, it doesn't have an internal pop screen. Right. Other mics, um, like Harlan's mic, it's got more of an internal pop screen. It's harder to see the you capsule can't see in the capsule there. At all, yeah. So it's better protected. So those mics, I think TLM 102 is one of those mics that comes to mind. That's a very open basket. You can see the capsule super easily, and that one's going to be easier to get dirty and, right. and muck up. So right. watch out for those mics. Yeah. But of course, it's gravity makes things go this way. The only way dirt's going to get in there is if you blow into it. But anyway, yeah, yeah. so that's the secret to, uh, you can now turn my mic down as I put this back up. I rather liked it there. You do? Yeah. Well, it's right in front of my face. Yeah. Then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds good, man. Yeah. All right. Well, we got, uh, we got a question or two and some other stuff we want to show you in our next segment uh, here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Hey, it's time to talk about our good friend Harlan Hogan and his fantastic website, voiceoveressentials.com. And this week, we got something we're going to let you in on a little bit early. Tomorrow, you're going to see an ad in Voice Over Extra for Voice Over Essentials, where you can get $15 off their pop screen for the VO1A microphone. Fits it perfectly. And the Harlan Hogan Signature Series headphones. 
believe it or not. And these are great headphones. They are made for voiceover. They're made of the best materials, memory foam, the Twistaflex headband, which is comfortable, and you can wear it for hours. And, uh, and it comes with the disconnecting piece on here as opposed to ripping it out and then having to solder it back in because soldering back headphones, not an easy job. Also, I hear it that the Portabooth Plus may be coming back too. So if you want to take advantage of these great savings, $15 off if you do it before tomorrow, go over to voiceoveressentials.com. Best way to go there, go to the bottom of our homepage here. You'll see the, the, the little icon of Harlan. He's just this little tiny guy in front of his Portabooth Pro and click on that and that will take you right to voiceoveressentials.com where you can buy all his stuff and he guarantees it. If you don't like it, you can send it back. But what's not to like? Thanks, Harlan, for being our sponsor for eight years. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves, but I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Well, it's time to mention our wonderful sponsors, Source Elements. Those are the creators of Source Connect, and uh, it's a software package that voice actors who are ready to kind of step up to be doing higher level work, specifically or even more so union work, they're working with agents. You're going to hear this a lot, which is you need to have Source Connect. And if you want to go check it out, head over to source-elements.com and get a free trial. This is what you should do. First, go get uh, your iLock account, I-O-L-I-L-O-K.com. That is totally free. Get it set up. Then head over to source-elements.com. Get your account set up over there. Get yourself going with a 15-day free trial. Get it running on your machine, get it, get familiar with it, get through the learning curve of how it works, how it's set up, all that. Get it rocking and rolling. Then, now you're ready to go. Next, you can tell your clients, I've got Source Connect, okay? They don't have to know it's on trial right now. It's just there and you know it works. That job comes through, boom, you, you pull the trigger, you go back to your account, and at that point, you can buy the license outright or you can sign up for a subscription base, which a lot of people choose to do. It's much less expensive to get up and running. But go give it a try. It's a really, really great package. And this year, hopefully, we, we've got a new version on uh, in development for the last, I think, five years uh, that when it comes out, it's going to be revolutionary. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, source-elements.com. Thanks for your support of our great show here, Voice Over Body Shop. And we'll be right back with the Tech Talk. Right after this. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. And we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk. Now, now I noticed I, I, I notice a lot of guys who also do what we do, or at least say they do. A lot of them have their video series. I know you have a lot of stuff where you're really you're demonstrating, you know, video. Yeah, I've been kind uh, of, you know, you like to unbox I've been kind things. Of, yeah, I've been kind of lazy on the videos yeah. once in a while. It, it takes a lot of effort. It's time consuming. You know, if you're going to constantly put something out like, like that out. Mm -hmm. But I'm finding that there are a number of individuals out there mm -hmm. that have video courses, you know, and they talk about what they know and they show you how they do what they do. But in order to learn how to do your home voiceover studio properly, to me, it sounds like you really need to talk to people who understand specifically a home studio, but more importantly, who you are 
and how you do your work and what you sound like in the room that you're recording. Yeah, your studio specifically. Right, because yeah. most of these guys are experts in one studio, their own. Right. Uh, whereas someone like Mr. Whittem and myself, where we have combined, I was counting the other day, it's close to 50 years experience of working in audio and, you know, probably 30 years of doing home voiceover studio. Yeah. Work. It's, it's a unique environment that didn't exist 20 years ago. And you need to talk to people if you really want to have a good home voiceover studio, get it set up right and sounding right. You got to talk to the guys that know what it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. <laughs> what is it supposed to sound like? What is it supposed I still to... like that one. I, I still forget to use it, but I like that one. That's because I patented it. It's, <laughs> I got to pay you it. to use it? That's right. I'm taking you to East Texas. <laughs> okay. <It's going> down. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> If you'd like to work with somebody who really knows what a home voiceover studio is supposed to sound like in your environment, because remember, every voice is different, every room is different, every single home voiceover studio has to really be uniquely designed for you, for your lifestyle, for what you sound like, and how you want to use it. Every quilt you hang on the wall is different from your grandma. <laughs> Absolutely. It looks great but and, and probably sounds fabulous, too. Uh, but it's fun to go into people's closets and you know not only see what they're wearing, but also what they sound like in there. And uh, so if they would like to work with you, George, yeah. where would they go? You head over to georgethetech.com, and that's where all my world of tech support lo is located. I got menus on there for uh, addressing specific software issues or just getting consultations. You can schedule them there. Uh, you can book uh, on-site support as well. It's all in one place. And Dan also has a website with a different name, and it's over at homevoiceoverstudio.com, uh, where I talk about the things that I do, how to set up a consultation, or if, you need a, if you've got a problem with your studio, uh, you can do a troubleshoot for half an hour. We'll make sure we'll solve the problem. Mm -hmm. I guarantee my work, and you're going to sound better afterwards. And I'll show you examples of what people used to sound like and what they sound like now, uh, which will improve yours, too. Plus, I also have the Specimen Collection Cup where you can send me your audio. And for $25, I will analyze it. We'll see if you need some improvements and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so check us out. We know what we're doing and we know what you're supposed to sound like. How was that for a, a totally off the cuff commercial for and what we long, do? Long, I might add. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> speaking of long, you and I, we've known each other for over 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Since we, we met at, at VoiceOver 2008. 2008. Yeah, yeah. At the, is, is, is the, the Century Plaza still there? I think so. I don't know. Yeah, they they expanded the Westfield Mall, and now it's yeah. like, it, I figured Maybe they just, absorbed it. I don't know. Yeah, it may, it may have done that. Mm -hmm. But but we started doing this show, believe it or not, March 22nd, 2011. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> we, we we sort of went past that date, and you know we've done anniversary shows before, yeah. but we just sort of Something ignored it. Not so significant feeling about the eighth. Maybe, eighth, yeah. Sure. I don't you know, know. <laughs> you know, my, my wife and I are gonna have our twenty fifth anniversary this year, and we're like, maybe that's kind of important, you know. But eight, eh, eh. But we figured we'd just go back and show you how experience makes things better. <laughs> and time and technology. Yeah. So <laughs> just here's a little bit of what. Episode number one looked like. Live from a basement in Buffalo and an office in L.A., here are Dan Leonard and George Whittem. Good evening and welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the we West. we are East, East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. All right, well, we got that out of the way anyway. So good evening and welcome to our show. We are live worldwide on the net. We have been planning this for months and we're actually, well, we're not on the air. Well, I guess we are. I suppose we're off on a satellite somewhere being boomed, uh, you know, across the waves over to Egypt and, and Lithuania and, uh, you know, I was going to say the Soviet Union. It's been a few weeks. Anyway, we're here to solve your studio problems. Uh, if you're a voice actor or you're, you do audio books or you just like to record at home and you have problems with your home voiceover studio, that's what George and I do. We are consultants and engineers and, uh, we know how to solve these things. We've seen it all. 
and we've been trying to uh, find a way to c- communicate with as many people as possible. And we came up with East West Audio Body Shop, and we're here for you. If you have a question for us, we'd love to have you on. We've got a couple of people already lined up for tonight. But if you have a question for us, uh, you can go to our f- our Facebook page, hey, Chris. East West Audio Body. Uh, hey there, Chris. East West Audio Body Shop, and we can. Uh, okay, stand by. I I can hear you, George. It's a <laughs> one of those things. <laughs> Like like I said, it's a it's a it's sort of a dress rehearsal, and it's going to be worth it just just for that alone. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to be here to answer your questions, and if you have a question, you can email it to us at ewabs e w a b s one at verizon dot net, or go to our Facebook page, East West Audio Body Shop, which is East West one word Audio Body Shop another word, and you'll get into our Facebook page or our Facebook group, and you can join that. And leave a question there, and we'll get back to you and make sure that if we think your question is airworthy, we'll let you on. So uh, why don't we get things going right now? So good evening. Who's calling East West Audio Body Shop? Um, actually, I was trying to reach uh, Nunzio's Pizza, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll ask a question anyway. This is Chris from North Carolina. Chris from North Carolina. Yes, hi. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have a pizza to go and no anchovies, I guess. Anyway, we were trying to be funny. We were trying to capture the car talk thing going on, but didn't, we didn't quite happen. But <laughs> but look at the difference in quality now. We're sharp. In, in, we have chroma key. We have light. Light, yeah. We, we're I, I was the same a floating room. head in that one. Yeah, which we're is even room. better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was fun doing it in those days because, you know, I could futz around with things on my desk and, you know, it would... But now we actually get to talk. Yeah, to, would, the interviews are actually I'm, right Dan here. Dan would always have something in his fingers, and he'd be just like fussing with it or <laughs> doing something. I'm like, Dan, what are you doing? What are you doing on your ass? Just cut my mic. You know, it's like. <laughs> but now, no, uh, now I'm looking up people's nostrils, literally, and I have to figure it out. But we, we, we had a good time with that. We have a couple of questions yep. uh, tonight. Uh, again, if you ever got a question for us, write to us at theguys at vobs.com. TV, mm-hmm. because we have the answers. And if we don't have the answer, there is no answer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's our first question? Uh, from Gerard McGuire. Gerard, says, former uh, star of Prisoner in Cell Block H. He remembers. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I've now set up my whisper room with the four-inch thick Owens Corning 703 acoustic um, um, insulation on two walls and the ceiling in an endeavor to eliminate the man-in-a-box sound with limited success. The booth has minimized most outside sounds, not all. It is L.A. Um, I don't like messing with plugins, but would using some processing, like a high-pass filter, knock out the remaining boominess that is still there, or do I still need to fiddle with bass traps? I, I always think, do everything you can physically to fix the sound before you start playing around with processing. Yeah, because that's a one, like, once you get that right, you don't have to touch it again. It is locked down and it is set yeah. for, until you decide to expand or something. Yeah. Somebody sent me some audio, uh, and they were in a, a, a new custom-built booth, and this booth comes with big bass traps, and they're optional. You can put them in. And he sent us two different versions, one with the bass traps in there and one without, and it was far boomier with the bass traps. That's so bizarre. I mean, occasionally somebody will send me samples and I'll tell them what to do and they'll send back the audio and it's worse. And I'm going, what? <laughs> that makes no sense at all. Are you really? messing with me? Yeah. yeah. It's fascinating. And things don't always work out the way you expect them to. Yeah. There's some experimenting. Yeah. So, Gerard, I think it's really important that we get to hear it and, you know, and let's see what it sounds like. Can you use... EQ to to reduce some of the boominess. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you know, I mean it's subtle things. But how would you, how do you handle that? Yeah, I mean it, it depends on where the boominess the frequency range of the boominess. Um, every room has a as a specific what 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 are called room modes. So it's based on the size of the room volume, the volume of the room. So uh, if it's four by six feet by seven feet tall, calculate, multiply, get your volume, and then you can look up on a calculator what frequencies that room will naturally resonate at. And if one of those is right smack in the middle of your vocal range, 
especially at the low mid range, it's going to be boomy. And so bass trapping is going to be pretty important. It also has to do with your mic placement and your mic proximity. So if you're kind of in towards a corner, then the corner is where low end builds up. So don't be in the corner, move into the middle, more towards the middle of the room. Um, it depends on the mic you're using, uh, the pickup pattern and how far away you are. As you get further away from the mic, the distance between you and the walls and the ceiling and the mic start to become more similar. And so the mic hears more of what's going on around you than you. That sounds worse, so get closer to the mic. So there's a, a lot of things to experiment with to improve the sound. I think his instincts are right. You know, four inches of 703 is a pretty good start. It, yeah. That's going to suck up a lot of low, a, a lot of low mid-range. But what it won't deal with is the low, low range. The eight, the, maybe the 100 hertz and lower stuff. It still won't help with that. So... Right. Bass trapping might might be in his future. Well, got to hear it, and then we'll yeah. be make a determination. But, yeah. you know, the thing is, is you've got to know what it's supposed to sound like yourself or have somebody else who knows how to do that to really listen to it. Because sometimes people say, well, I sound great in this. But, of course, you don't hire you. So I think, Yeah, Gerard's been around the block a while, right? Right. With his voiceover, so yeah. he... He has a pretty good idea of what he should be sounding like. And so a very deep voice. He's hearing he's hearing something he doesn't like. Now, I also have to ask you, Jar, are you hearing it that way in your, like, just acoustically in the room when you're talking with your headphones off? Or on your playback. Or is that what you're hearing in your playback? Yeah. And when you hear it in the playback, is that what you're hearing through studio monitors or through headphones? If it's through studio monitors, is the room you're playing it back in causing some of that boominess? Because the speaker can now interact and feedback with the room. A lot of factors. So yeah, if you send audio to us, we're going to be listening to it through trusted monitoring and we're going to know what we're hearing. He'll probably run it over here tonight. And... Yeah, What's he is going local. on here? <laughs> anyway, Paula Fay has a question. Yes. Um, oh, and yeah, we mentioned high, you did mention high pass. If all the issue is at the very low end, yeah. a high pass filter will help. It'll help a little If it's bit. in the low mid range, then it's going to miss that and you're going to make it sound thin. It's not going to work out right. well. Because your voice exists in that frequency. Yeah, you got to yeah. be careful with the high pass. Um, Paula Faye says, I love Twisted Wave. Don't we all? We do. There is a, is there uh, any tutorial on using the update available? She may have tuned in late. Um, right. There is. Tell them it's, about uh, it. <laughs> over at George the Tech, the Facebook uh, or the YouTube channel. Uh, just type in George the Tech and Twisted Wave. You should have no problem uh, finding it. But I go through all the new feature sets and walk through it one by one. Um, also, she says, if I update, do I need to reload my RX-6 stack that I currently use? No, that should not be the case. Um, I know last week when I was on vacation, I hopped online and I saw all these posts. So I got all these notifications from Twisted Wave group saying, Broken problem, crash, bug, plug-in. There were a lot of problems last week as all these updates were being rolled out. But now, um, if you do the update, knock on phone, yeah. uh, knock on wood, um, you shouldn't have to do any reloading of anything. Your stacks should still be there. Your plug should still function. You should be okay. But um, still, you should probably listen. To, you know, if, it, if she's got a stack there, there's little adjustments to be made. Yeah, don't trust that it's going to work exactly the same. Make sure you listen to it. Um, but you should be okay. Um, Mojave has its own set of issues because Mojave is now a 64-bit operating system purely. Isn't that true? Carson, do you know about that to be the case? It's been 64-bit for a while, but there was like ability to run in 32-bit software, I think, for a long time. I think. Yeah, so I think with Mojave, there is no 32-bit software function that functions on Mojave. So um, if you had an older plugin that was 32-bit, that might break when you're on the new versions of Twisted Wave 64-bit, Twist uh, Mac OS 64-bit. Oh, so much to keep track of. Just, just be careful. Be aware that you may be stuck upgrading a plugin. Right. Um, this is what we call the upgrade spiral. That's what I call it. When you when you upgrade an operating system, it can create a domino effect, and now you have to upgrade this, and then this, and then this. So keep think it simple. twice before you upgrade too much. Yeah, I mean, keep it simple. Do what you can physically. Don't rely so much on processing. 
unless you really know what you're doing or somebody who knows how to do the processing has set it up for you. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, exactly. if you don't know what something does, don't use it. You probably shouldn't. <laughs> Most likely. All right. Well, we've got uh, a few things to announce afterwards, uh, so don't go away. We'll be right back to wrap things up right after this. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. What question do we get most often? Well, far and away, it's, how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take vo to go gos free Getting Started in VO class. You heard right, it's free, and it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need all in one single comprehensive online class taught by vo to go gos David H. Lawrence the 17th. This class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Sure you do. Go to gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. And we're back. Got another question here. I just happened to what pop day? in and look at the email, and one came in right here at the end from Kate Rowland. Um, her MacBook is crashing. When she has Twisted Wave open, and then she unplugs the UR22, um, what's the solution? Well, it's kind of like the old joke with the doctor. Doctor, it hurts when I do this. And the doctor says, don't, don't do that. that. Um, no, that's not the answer you're looking for, is it? Um, well, I, well, let me just take a minute. It Generally, do not unplug hardware that's being used by a program. That's never a good idea. Like, just, just don't do that, frankly. Um, but it still shouldn't be happening. Um, the UR22 Steinberg interface is great, but it does have a driver. Um, and that driver should probably be updated. Make sure it's the most up-to-date driver for your OS. You didn't say what OS you're on, what version of Mac OS you're on, so I don't know. But make sure the driver you're using with your Steinberg is the same and matches. 
and make sure again that you have the most bleeding edge up-to-date version of Twisted Wave if you are running a new version. Make sure it's at least 1.21.6. 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21.6. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and hopefully, if you get everything up to speed, that will resolve that issue. Fingers crossed. Let uh, us know. Good Put luck. Comment down below if, if that fixed it. Yes. Excellent. Next week, our guest, we're not sure who our guest is going to be, but we would love it if you would first take our survey on the website and tell us what you think about the show and what you would like to see what we could improve upon do you like what we changed this year we yeah. changed things up for the 2019 so yeah clearly doing... somebody likes it because a lot more people seem to be watching it's now, true which is great viewers, views and listens are going up so. way up right. way up and uh but if there's a guest you'd like to see on the show let us know you know it might be somebody we can get might not be but we'll see but write to us at the guys at vobs Dot TV and uh, give us a suggestion. We'd really like that. Yeah, and the survey on the website also does have a section on there about suggesting guests, so we're happy to take that suggestion there as well. Oh. Now, of course, you can donate to our show to keep us going, which we really appreciate. And who are our donors of the week? We do have some. Some of these, and many of these actually, are subscribers that donate regularly, such as Sarah Borges, CJ Ringwall, Michelle Blanker. Hey, Michelle. Didn't she win the Unicorn Award at VO Atlanta? I believe so. Congratulations. Um, Dr. Nathan Carlson. Cool guy. Uh, Antland Productions. Uncle Roy. Him. Graham Spicer. Brian Rausch. And Joseph Harrison. Christy Burns. And Tracy H. Reynolds. All right. A lot of familiar names in there. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Well, we're in a nice... Studio Bricks uh, booth tonight. It is. Virtually, anyway. This one was a recent addition. This one is Joe Cipriano's oh. current home oh. studio setup. That legendary uh, set up by the actual owners of the company who came in <laughs> yeah, and, this one and was, set it up for This them. one was assembled by the owners of Studio Bricks. That was amazing timing. The fact I, that his booth was delivered and it was the day before NAM. NAM yeah. <laughs> and those guys drove up from Anaheim oh, to was, help us put it together. That was great. Now, somebody did send in a picture this week, but we make it very clear. Send it in landscape, not portrait, because yeah. we're this is a 16 by 9 picture. And, and another mm. little uh, side note on that as well. Don't have yourself right in the center. Of the <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny. It might be literally weird having you in the background, dead center between Dan and I the whole show. <laughs> Just saying, uh, you know. But I think we got another one from that same our, the same contributor. So next week we can fly it in. Yeah, there. we will. We will. Oh, Mike, thanks, Mike. Excellent. So show us your booths. All right, uh, George the Tech. How do you get it? <laughs> Voiceover Studio. We dot talked com. about it. It's a dot com. You, you, just, just, you, you dot just com go. that thing and you're in there. You're fine. You're fine. All right. Hey, you want to be in our studio? Write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV. We actually have an audience tonight. Get, shoot the audience cam there. So. One of them was a guest. So yeah. Does he count? But he's on the couch and that <laughs> counts as a guest during this show. So that, that's important. Uh, let's see. Now, we're, we're live alternate Mondays. like So we won't be live until... For another two weeks, mm -hmm. so let us know if Monday of April. April, April. Yeah. yeah, and uh, but you know we do we're, we're doing the show live. We we tape it live, so it's totally spontaneous, and we don't have to edit it too much. <laughs> and then uh, we'll we'll do the tech talk next week. But our interview all this week with our guest will be on all this week. Uh, let's see. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors because without them, <laughs> we wouldn't have a show like Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials, mm -hmm. voiceover extra source elements, VO to go, go voice actor websites.com. J. Michael Collins demos. All righty. And of course, uh, the Dan and Marcy Leonard foundation for the betterment of webcasting, live uh, webcasting, you live webcast. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, our producer, Catherine Curtin, who's out because of some family issues, yeah. but she does a great job for us. Mike Merlino, Sue's son, on the uh, chat room duty Thanks, tonight. Man. And, of course, our amazing technical director who's just got it down to a T, Sue Merlino. At least she likes to think so. Fix it in person. Yeah, well, exactly. So uh, thanks to them. Uh, 
Let's see. What else we got to talk about here? Um, oh, we got to say good night. Oh, we got to say good night, and especially Lee Penny for being Oh, yeah, Lee, don't forget. Lee Penny. Lee. We never forget Lee Penny. Oh, Lee. Well, all right. Hopefully, we gave you enough information on our show this week to, uh, to better your career just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And we appreciate you watching. It's not an easy business, but George and I are here to help you. And we're here every week on Voice Over Body Shop. So uh, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Widow. And this is Voice Over Body Shop. Or VO BS. That was real enthusiastic. Oh, All right. Malaflores. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs>